You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. Hello and welcome back to the channel, the Chronicles of Aguna YouTube channel, exclusive bit of YouTube content right here for you. And on this edition, I'm going to be revealing my fantasy Premier League team. Yes, I play fantasy Premier League. I can't say that I always stick with it through the entirety of the season. Sometimes I fall behind, lose interest. Other weeks, I just simply forget to pick my team. But uh, I am going to do my best to stick to it this time around. And I can see there are tons of you uh, playing with us here on the Chronicles of Aguna Fantasy League, of which the details are in the description. So I'd love for you to get involved and we'll be bringing you updates on our Fantasy League throughout the course of the season. Uh, we're going to think up some prizes as well for the winner uh, come the end of the campaign. We might give prizes to second and third as well. Uh, still a work in progress. I still have to work all of that out, but we're definitely going to be doing something and I'm looking forward to playing the game with you all throughout the course of the season. Now, for me, fantasy football is quite simple. There are a few rules like Arsenal fan can't have Harry Kane in the team. Simple as that. Uh, I try to stay away from Spurs players altogether, but sometimes you've got no choice if you want to play the game properly and if you want to win the game. So I'm actually breaking one of my own rules here by including a Spurs player, but it isn't Harry Kane. Maybe I'll consider bringing him in if he joins Manchester City. We'll have to wait and see. But here is my team then. So I'm going to reveal to you guys what my team is. I'm going to talk you through my decisions. And I know the first thing that you're going to say when you look at the team is, what the hell is that? But there's so many things to consider in fantasy football these days. And um, first of all, one of the big things to, to consider and one of the big problems is that we can't afford everybody. How do you get around the money issue? Because there are so many players uh, that, are, that I'd like to have in this team that I simply can't afford to have in this team. So what do you do? You know, how do you find that right balance? What's the right balance between defence and attack? Of course, defence earns you points from clean sheets and things like that. Attack is obviously where the majority of your points come from you know, goals, assists, et cetera, et cetera. Bookings also uh, are, a, are a problem. Red cards are a problem. So you don't want to overload your team uh, or, or overspend on the defence. Uh, but you've got to be quite tactical in how you pick all of this. And I've had a, a few real issues in doing this. I'm going to talk you through uh, my fantasy football team so far. So this is my squad. Of course, I'm playing the fantasy Premier League one over on premierleague.com. In the goalkeeper position, personally, I think it's a waste of money to spend on two good goalkeepers. I don't see the point. I'd rather use that money elsewhere on the team. And if I come to a situation where my goalkeeper is out for a couple of games or whatever, then I'll use a transfer and I will change him rather than using a proportion of my transfer budget to bring in a second goalkeeper who I don't mind using. Does that make sense? Maybe not. Anyway, you get the gist of what I'm trying to say. So I've gone with one goalkeeper here that I wanted to pick and I've gone with Jordan Pickford. Now, I believe that under Rafa Benitez, Everton are going to be defensively better, defensively better than they've been in previous seasons. I watched them at times under Carlo Ancelotti and thought they looked a really good defensive unit. In certain games, I thought he set them up brilliantly. Pickford wasn't my first choice, right? I, I did initially put Emmy Martinez in there because he's another one who I expect to have a decent season. But when I thought about it and I thought about it on balance, actually, I think that Emmy Martinez, as good as he is, is playing in a side that aren't going to be as defensively secure necessarily as a Rafa Benitez side. Dean Smith, Rafa Benitez, who's more of a kind of defensive manager? Who's the one that you would think will pick up more clean sheets along the way. And ultimately, that's what keepers get points for. So I went with Jordan Pickford. And as I said, I don't want to spend money on the second goalkeeper. I think it's a waste. So I've gone with Run Arsen. Arsenal fans will know him well. Now, moving into the defence, I wanted to pick four defenders at least that I would be happy to start with. And one was just literally to fill up space. The four I've gone with, Lucas Digne. I've gone with him because, again, Everton, I feel like he is someone that will 
be part of a team cl keeping clean sheets, sorry. But also, Lucas Digne, he has that ability to provide assists in the shape of crosses, to score goals from free kicks, to put good balls into the penalty area. And so he's quite a smart defender to pick, I would say. So I've gone with Lucas Digne. I've also gone with Leicester City's Ricardo Pereira, because again, for me, he's a fullback that plays in a strong side that I expect to get forward and make things happen in an attacking sense. So I've gone with uh, Pereira. Across the rest of the defence, I've gone with Manchester City's Ruben Diaz. I I'm starting to wonder if I made the right choice here because Ruben Diaz might well keep uh, clean sheets. He might do, um, you know, he might do lots of good, but is he going to score many goals over the course of the season? No, but I'm kind of banking on City to keep clean sheets here. And I, and I know that City were very good defensively last season. I know he made a massive difference. So actually now I've just talked myself back into that being a good idea. So Ruben Diaz is in my defence. I've also gone with West Ham's Vladimir Kufal. Now, a lot of this is based on the prices of these players as well, right? There are other players that I prefer to have in the side, but of course, the money is restricted. Vladimir Kufal, I thought, got forward really, really well for West Ham. Uh, last season, contributed with some really good crosses into the box, linked up quite frequently, didn't he, with Thomas Suchek. So I'd imagine that Vladimir Kufal should, in theory, have a pretty similar season. Now, West Ham are another team with a manager who I believe is very good at organising a defence. And so while West Ham are not one of the traditional big six, if you like, I think them and Everton are two teams that you can expect to be quite defensively solid over the course of the season. And it's why I've got two Everton players and a West Ham man in my back line. Now, my filler in the back line is Duffy from Brighton and Hove Albion. He will not be selected in my team. Most weeks, I'm going to probably go with a back three because I think you can get more benefit from having more attackers and midfielders in the team. But there will be weeks where I look at the fixtures and I feel like I'll need a back four or that the back four will serve me better. So my back line, just to, uh, just to repeat, is uh, Duffy. He's the filler. Lucas Dina, Ricardo Pereira, Ruben Diaz and Vladimir Kufal. Moving into my midfield. Now, this bit is key because... In many ways, when you look at my my strikers, you might think I've gone with a bit of an underwhelming selection. But what I've done is decided, made a decision to go with more in the midfield. Because when I look around the Premier League at the moment, I look at the centre forwards that you know are around. Obviously, Harry Kane, future uncertain, uh, not going to be part of Spurs' side, you'd imagine, uh, for the opening game. Or will he? I don't know. Uh, but he's not going to be up to speed necessarily. Plus, I've got that all-important rule. No Harry Kane. So Harry Kane's not in my team. Outside of that, Sergio Aguero's gone. Historically, he would have been a regular pick for me. I look at Manchester United, Edinson Cavani. Would you put him up front? Romelu Lukaku, remember, has not officially joined Chelsea at the time of recording. So he is not an option at this moment in time. And other than that, I couldn't really. And that is why I had to do, um, I had, to, that is why I had to be uh, quite picky and, and make a decision on whether to go midfield heavy or forwards heavy. So my midfield is as follows. I've gone with Thomas Suchek of West Ham, scored lots of goals for them last season, was a real threat in the air. Do I think that he'll have as good a season again at West Ham? Probably not, but his price is quite reasonable. And I figured that he will make some contribution in that sense. Across the rest of the midfield, I've gone with Arsenal's Nicolas Pepe. I'm expecting him to have a really strong campaign. I thought it was excellent towards the back end last season. And I think he's probably one of Arsenal's biggest goal threats at the moment. So Nicolas Pepe is in there for me. I've gone with Mo Salah. That's a banker pick for me when I do fantasy football. He's one of the players that I always want to try and get into the team somehow. Always going to get goals, always going to get assists from Mo Salah. And another one who's a bit of a banker, Tottenham player, unfortunately, but I couldn't avoid this, was Hyung Min Son. So I've stuck him in there as well. And my fifth player that was a is a bit of a punt. It's a bit of a gamble. It's Brighton's Leandro Trossard. Again, very reasonably priced, quite cheap in con uh, comparison to some of his peers. But for me, Leandro Trossard, on the occasions that I watched him play last season, 
I thought was was really impactful. I thought he was really good at drifting in in field and driving at opponents. I saw him score a couple of brilliant goals from outside the box. I commentated on a couple of them uh, as well over the course of last season. So a big fan of Leandro Trossard. And that one's a bit of a punt for me, a bit of a gamble. Uh, but I think the midfield, having Pepe, Salah and Son, will balance out what I've done in the forward positions. Now, again, I reiterate the point. I don't think there are that many standout centre forwards in the Premier League anymore. Um, and, and this is why it's it's really difficult to make this decision. I've gone with Brentford new boy, Ivan Tony. Ivan Tony obviously had a really good uh, season last season. When I say Brentford new boy, I mean Brentford are the new boys. They're just coming to the Premier League. Little bit unsure as to how Tony's form is going to translate from the Championship to the Premier League, but again, very reasonably priced, and he's Brentford's penalty taker. So uh, yeah, gone with uh, Ivan Tony. I've also gone with Aston Villa's Ollie Watkins. Now I understand he's a doubt for the start of the season, for the first game of the season, but I'm playing the long game here, and I think Ollie Watkins had a really good campaign last time out. Not only does he score goals, he provides assists, and I think that is something that maybe goes under the radar a little bit with Ollie Watkins in fantasy football, scored a lot of points last season. And again, in order to accommodate that midfield that I've gone with, I've, I've decided to put him in up top. I've also put Arsenal's Alexander Lacazette, another one who will provide assists in that centre forward position. But also I expect him to lead the line for Arsenal this season. And I thought last season was probably one of his best in an Arsenal shirt. So I'm expecting him to continue that form. It's always the case at Arsenal that when you've got uh, a player who who is running out of contract, they, they turn up, they perform, they take their game to another level. So that's why I've gone with Alexander Lacazette. Now, if I show you guys the team that I have picked for the first weekend, uh, this is what I've done based on the players that I have available to me. And this might change uh, between now and the kickoff tomorrow. But I've gone with Jordan Pickford in goal. I've gone with a back four of Lucas Dina, Ricardo Pereira, Ruben Diaz and Vladimir Kufal. My midfield is Mo Salah, Thomas Suchet, Hilmin Son and Nicola Pepe with Alexander Lacazette and Ivan Tony up front. With those two, of course, face each other, don't they? Arsenal take on Brentford in the first Premier League game of the season. So that's my fantasy football team, Real Simeu CF. If you want to get involved in the league, the details are in the description. The code is there too if the link doesn't work directly for you because I know a few people have said it doesn't work. Some have said it's fine. Others say it doesn't. So I've put the code in there just to be safe. Make sure you come and join our league right here on the Chronicles of Aguna. As I say, we'll be bringing you updates on it throughout the course of the season. And I look forward to playing fantasy football with you all. Feel free to slag off my team in the comments, but make sure you hit the like button in the process. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and I'll catch you all very soon. Ciao. listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon.